Yo, what's going on? Marvel the Cross 316 back with another amazing Spider-Man review. Today we're going to be reviewing issue number six. Issue number six came out in November of 1963. One thing I forgot to mention from yesterday um, when I made issue number five review is that by issue number five, the Amazing Spider-Man title became a monthly, um, basically, title. So um, the Amazing Spider-Man title became so popular with the fans that they made sure to make it a monthly issue by issue five. So that's pretty impressive. And so today's villain, we're looking at none other than this guy right here, the Big Bad Lizard. He made his appearance in a movie already in Amazing Spider-Man. Whether you like that series or not is up to you. I prefer the original Spider-Man series with Tobey Maguire. That's just me. I grew up with watching Tobey Maguire back in the day. But the Lizard was still a great villain in the Amazing Spider-Man movie. Now let's look at this story. Of course, we have Stan Lee writing the story. We have it drawn by Steve Ditko. And then Artie Semek was the letterer, okay? So we have um, just a big splash page right here. And this story is a 21-page Spider-Man super epic. So they started making the stories longer as well to suit the fans. Because I'm, I'm pretty sure at this point the fans are like, give me more. We want more, okay? So this story is a little bit different from the other stories that we've looked at so far in that it takes place in a different state. A different state, and that state is the state of Florida. This is where most of the action is going to take place here, is in the state of Florida. We know that Peter Parker, the amazing Spider-Man, lives in New York City. But this villain right here, he lives in Florida. So when you have a half man, half lizard walking around in the Florida Everglades, people are going to be talking about it. And so that's what happens. News reaches all the way to New York City. And lo and behold, Spider-Man finds out about it. And he's like, all right, a new villain on the scene. And of course, J. Jonah Jameson trying to threaten Spider-Man the best way possible, trying to say, okay, Spider-Man, why don't you go to the Florida and fight the lizard? He's put that in his newspaper article or editorial. And so Spider-Man, Peter Parker, is up to the challenge. Now, before he can go to the Florida Everglades, he has to work with Mr. Jameson. And Mr. Jameson, he thinks that... The lizard is a hoax. He he just put that in the newspaper just to get sales. We learned from other issues that J. Jonah Jameson, he's all about making money. He uses Spider-Man as a way to put money in his wallet. Now, remember from last issue, Betty Brant has been showing a lot of interest to Peter Parker. And again, she's being very nice to Peter Parker. And Peter Parker is learning that she does seem to be a little bit nice to me. I might need to be nice back. So he says, thanks, Betty. I sure wish you were the publisher instead of just being his secretary. So, again, the relationship or the friendship that started between Betty Brant and Peter Parker is something to take note. Now, Peter Parker wants to know everything about lizards and reptiles if he's going to go to the Florida Everglades. So that's what he does. He goes to this museum. And of course, we run into the two main figures in our past stories, which is Liz Allen and Flash Thompson. And of course, they're on a date. Remember, Peter Parker has a big crush on Liz Allen. He's tried in the past to invite or go on a date with Liz Allen, but it's never worked out. One time in issue four, it almost worked, but then, of course, he had to fight the Sandman. So it, his luck has never really been that great when it comes to getting a date with Liz Allen, the beautiful Liz Allen right here. Now, 
we have these crooks. They're trying to steal rubies from this museum. Why they would steal rubies from museum, I don't know. But that's where this story um, starts out with with these crooks. Spider-Man comes on the scene. Peter Parker changes to Spider-Man, fights these crooks, and saves Liz Allen. And, of course, when you have a superhero like that, look at her face. I mean, she is just in shock that Spider-Man... Like, saved her. He called her blue eyes. So for the rest of the story, Liz Allen has this big crush on Spider-Man. She, she even, like, says to, you know, Flash Thompson, oh, you're just Flash Thompson, but Spider-Man, he's a whole nother story. Now, Spider-Man has to find a way to get to Florida. So what he does is he threatens J. Jonah Jameson and it's quite hilarious of what he does. He webs him to the ceiling in his office, and he basically says, send a, one of your photographers to Florida because I'm going to Florida, and I'm fighting the lizard. So that basically influences J. Jonah Jameson to get Peter Parker to go to Florida. So sometimes you got to do what you got to do to get to Florida. Because it is a beautiful state. And you got to go down there and kick some butt, some lizard butt. That's what you got to do. So this is what happens. Uh, Peter Parker comes back and he's like, get in here. He is, Peter Parker was about to ask Betty Brown on a date. But, of course, J. Jonah Jameson cut him off right there. But we learn to find out that J. Jonah Jameson is going to go along with Peter Parker. And Peter Parker had no idea that that was going to happen. So he goes to Florida with him at May. It's kind of hesitant for him to go. But once Peter Parker tells her that he's going with J. Jonah Jameson, she's like, oh, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, you can go. He'll take care of you. And then this is funny right here. He's like a big, fat guardian angel at May. <laughs> I could just hear him now saying that. that that's just funny. All right, so Peter Parker, they get on the plane, and Peter Parker realizes, oh, yeah, there's this guy named Dr. Curtis Connors. He's a reptile expert, and he might be able to help me locate the lizard and fight off the lizard. So Spider-Man makes a, um, an appearance here as Peter Parker says, I'm going to be out for a while. I'm going to go get some film for my camera. So that gives Peter Parker the time to change to Spider-Man and locate the lizard. Now let's get to the main part of this. A lizard fights Spider-Man. Um, and Spider-Man realizes real quick who the lizard really is and just his powers. Like this is not a guy dressed up in a lizard suit. This guy really is a reptile. He's half human, half lizard. He can talk, he can walk, and he's dangerous. Now, Spider-Man, again, remember, he's looking for Curtis Connors. He finds his wife crying in the window, just, just supposedly he finds his house. And she reveals to Spider-Man that he is the lizard, that Curtis Connors is the lizard, that he was a scientist, and he fought in a war. We don't know which war. It may have been World War II. It may have been the Korean War. We just don't know. But... He loses his arm in that war, and so he dedicates his entire research to growing that limb back. I mean, if you can never um, grow, grow back your arm, if you lost it, I would definitely try to get it back. It works with animals, his serum, he makes his serum, and it works for animals. That rabbit grew his leg back, so he thinks, if it works for animals, by golly, it will work for me. So he drinks down the serum, and all of a sudden, boom, his arm grows back. But that's not all, folks. That's not all. Look what happens. His arm begins to just get all scaly-like. And all of a sudden, he becomes the villain that we have in this story, the lizard. Now, very, very important um, to note here is that every minute, every waking minute, the lizard grows less human. And when ever Spider-Man is fighting the lizard, he has a little bit of Dr. Connor still in him. Like, he hates that his son, Billy, is frightened by the very appearance of him. 
But as Spider-Man continues to battle the lizard, he becomes more and more of an animal instead of human. And so Spider-Man is desperate to find a way to cure Dr. Connors from being the lizard. So Spider-Man uses his scientific knowledge to create a serum, and of course it works. And let's go on down to the main part of the battle here. Um, Spider-Man is desperate. He has to get Dr. Connors to drink this serum, the lizard to drink this serum, so that he can become his normal self again. And so Spider-Man has to take note that he can't really fight the lizard with his full strength because if he did, you know, his son and his wife don't want any harm to come to him. So Spider-Man's going to pull his punches here. He's going to try to not use his full strength. The lizard is already recruiting his army of, of alligators and crocodiles here. And the lizard's goal was basically to make this army of reptiles to rule the world. Because there are tons and tons of reptiles on this earth, and that would have been mighty dangerous, by golly. So let's see what happens next. Spider-Man's fighting the lizard, and they go in this big tunnel. And this is where the main action starts right here. Spider-Man bolts down the door so that the other alligators can't get him. And it looks like Spider-Man's trapped, but what Spider-Man does is he knocks down the lizard a little bit, and he pulls out the serum. And there we go. The lizard chugs down that serum. And the lizard still fighting. He's like, Spider-Man's like, what in the world? I, I poured that serum down the lizard's throat. And why is he still um, not changing yet? Well, the serum has to kick in first, I guess. The lizard start finally starts to feel the effects of the serum. He's like, my head, my brain, what what is happening to me? And then the lizard finally starts to transition back to his normal self, Dr. Curtis Connors. And Curtis Connors is finally cured from being the lizard for a time. A little bit of a spoiler there. We, if you're a big comic geek like me, you know he's going to be the lizard again in, uh, in issues to come. But for right now... He's back towards back to his normal self, and that pretty much ends the story of the lizard so far. The lizard, like other villains, is stopped, and the lizard does not break any laws, so he's not going to jail or prison like the other villains that we've looked at. Peter Parker brings back some pictures for J. Jonah Jameson to look at, but J. Jonah Jameson tears them up, basically saying that the lizard was just a big hoax that the lizard wasn't real to begin with. Remember, J. Jonah Jameson was not with Peter Parker when Spider-Man was fighting off the lizard. So, And again, Spider um, Peter Parker did not get any pictures of Spider-Man as well. So J. Jonah Jameson is highly upset with Peter Parker. Peter Parker finally goes back home, not getting any money from this trip at all. Just getting your boss super, super mad. And he thinks, ah, oh, it's great to be home. I'm going to rest a little. But no, no, sir. We got Aunt May. She's like, get up. You're, you're going to do some chores. You, you men in Florida relaxing? Well, yeah, there's no relaxing in Florida when you're fighting off a human lizard. So Peter Parker's like, oh, I'm going to get to my chores. Let me call Liz Allen first, I'm going to try to ask her out on a date again. And of course, she get he gets a big fat no. And instead, she's like, don't be calling me and tell Flash to don't call me either. I'm waiting for Spider-Man to call me. And so this is pretty funny right here. He's like, oh no, she thinks Spider-Man has a crush on her. So she won't waste time dating plain ordinary Peter from Doleville. <laughs> Doleville. So I guess, you know, Spider-Man... Even ha he has his ways with the ladies and his effects, but no one would ever guess that behind that mask is Dole Peter Parker. 
And this is the funniest thing right here. There's a letter sent to J. Jonah Jameson. Betty Brant reads it, and it says, Roses are red, violets are blue. I'm still at large, so fewy to you. <laughs> so, yeah, that's, that is pretty funny, and it you could tell steam is about to blow out of his ears. So that's the end of the story, and we find out that in the next issue we will see the return of the Vulture. So please, if you haven't already, like this video and click the next uh, or the recent video that I uploaded, which was the battle with Dr. Doom. If you haven't seen that, that was a great story. I reviewed that, so go, go back and watch that if you haven't. But if you have already seen it, I'll see you in the next review as we look at issue number seven.